Hey, Steve Stretsky here. Welcome back to the show. Massive, massive week in the Canadian real estate world. We have to start this off first and foremost with the jumbo rate cut from the BOC, 50 basis points as expected, right? That's now 125 basis points of easing. Uh, I'm going to be honest, you know, you guys know that I've been watching this channel for a long time. I don't get everything right. You know, I'm not Nostradamus. I don't have the, the incredible, you know, ability to forecast six, 12 months out. But I think I've been pretty clear that my views on monetary policy and interest rate over the long term is that this is, you've got a global economy that is nearly $400 trillion of debt. That debt needs to roll over and refinance. Otherwise, you end up in a financial crisis of which no central bank or government or policymaker for that matter wants to endure under their watch. And so this was never a system that was designed to support the rapidly rising interest rate environment. And so that's exactly what you're seeing. And so I always make the joke because you can't taper a Ponzi. And that's really what we have here uh, in Canada as well as record household debt to GDP levels, record high house prices. You just, you, you can't taper a Ponzi. So rates are coming down. They're going to continue to come down. Uh, Tiff Maslam signaled as, as, signaled as much moving forward. You might get another 50 basis points in December. So, uh, you know, I know there's been lots of love in the YouTube comment section here about, you know, rates are going to be higher for longer. And, you know, that narrative is slowly starting to fade away. Uh, higher for longer narrative is slowly fading away because, again, you have ultimately uh, the end of the long-term debt super cycle where you just can't sustain these levels of interest rates at nearly $400 trillion of global debt. So why is every central bank now cutting rates? There's your answer. Um, now, there's a couple of things that I want to pull away on this. You know, the implications on the housing market, what we're seeing is increased activity levels. I have to emphasize here, first and foremost, everyone that I hear about, including colleagues in the industry, when the Bank of Canada lowers interest rates it does not change fixed rate mortgages. That plays off the bond market. There's a reason why when the Bank of Canada cut 50 basis points the other day, bond yields pushed higher. Mortgage Fixed mortgage rates did not move. They've actually been going up. It's because the bond market moved well in advance of Tiff Macklem. The bond market moved first. They moved before Tiff Macklem. So it priced in his future easing. And so even today, your variable rate with the cut is about 5% today when most fixed rate mortgages today are around 4.3. So again, even if you get another 50 basis points here in December coming up, that is, is still going to be a higher level of interest rate on your variable than it is on the fixed rate mortgages. So what I'm saying is you might not get the relief that you think you're going to get by the Bank of Canada continuing to cut interest rates, okay? So the move has largely been priced in. Um, what I was seeing is with these rate cuts is we are seeing an increase in housing activity. Uh, showing activities up, offer activities up, uh, mortgage applications are up. It shouldn't be surprising. People are, you know, the animal spirits in Canada, when people have more certainty about interest rates, which is a huge reason to that supports house prices, gives them a little bit more peace of mind. They start to see other people coming off the sidelines people start to follow what other people do. It's just, just human behavior. So we're seeing that. Again, one month doesn't necessarily make a trend, but I suspect that the sentiment, it is shifting. We're seeing it shift. Um, so we'll kind of continue to monitor that moving forward. I think the days of these low ball offers are fading away uh, largely. There's still pockets of the market, of course, that are really weak, but uh, we are seeing that sentiment shift, which I think is important for housing. Couple of things I want to touch on. Uh, so that shift, the Bank of Canada, what they talked about, you can look at their monetary policy report they put out. So they're projecting uh, about a 6% increase in residential investment in 2025 and 2026. So I had all these Bloomberg reporters call me after the rate cut and said, well, can you talk about this? You know, what what, is, what are your thoughts? 6% increase. The Bank of Canada is saying, we are forecasting an uptick in people buying houses. Uh, and in renovating their houses and investing into real estate. Um, and so what it means to me is the Bank of Canada, it, along with the finance minister, hello, Krista Freeland, who just changed all the mortgage rules, what, two weeks ago, they're going back to the old well. They're going back to the well, which is, hey, we need to stimulate the economy through the housing market. The housing market's been really, really soft for the last 24 months. Maybe we should start to turn the tide and 
get this economy up off its feet. And one way to do that is through housing. And so there's no, there's, there's a particular reason why you're seeing the finance minister of Canada easing borrowing requirements at the same time you're seeing the Bank of Canada cutting interest rates and saying, hey, we expect and we are forecasting an uptick in housing resale activity. So uh, they're going back to the old well. You know, it's funny, right? Because it's like, well, do we really want and need to re-stimulate housing? Is that really what we're going? But they're going back to the old well, which is, you know, when you when someone buys and sells a house, you know, you got a realtor involved, you got a lawyer involved, you got mortgage people involved, you got new furniture companies, moving companies, and the knock-on effects uh, that that brings on. So that's where they're going. But there's something in this that I really want to touch on because, you know, the Bank of Canada puts out these forecasts and they talk about how they see things playing out. And then the federal government drops an absolute bomb a day later, which is they are announcing that population, they they, they reduce the level of immigration in this country so that you notice they, they cut down, they cut down the target for permanent residents from 500,000 people next year to about 395,000 next year. This coincides with the changes that they announced about a month or two ago on non-permanent residents, which has been one of the largest cohorts of population growth in this country. The vast majority, again, we've been growing our population by 1.2 million people a year over the last couple of years. Population growth is running at its highest levels in 70 odd years. And a lot of that is through the non-permanent resident channel. So the, announcing this is they put specific targets on non-permanent residents. They want to take that share of the population down from 7% today to about 5%. And now they want to trim down the number of permanent residents. And so what is this going to do? It's actually going to bring Canada's population growth to zero. Zero. So again, remember... We have been growing 1.2 million people a year for the last couple of years. And the federal government has pulled a complete 180 and says, we are going to shrink. We're actually going to shrink Canada's population. This isn't my words. It's on the government of Canada's website. They specifically state that the population is going to shrink by 0.2%. Over the next couple of years. Again, talk about a hard U turn as you are slipping further and further in the polls. Uh, again, the ramifications of this are significant. Uh, I mean, it's unbelievable. First and foremost, you can talk about the Bank of Canada. I mean, they've just put out their monetary policy report and they see growth. They're forecasting growth over the next couple of years, population growth of 1.7%. 1.7%. But now the new target from the federal government, assuming they hit all their targets, right? I mean, these guys have proven they're not very good at executing a strategy. And truthfully, they're probably not going to be in power over the next you know, six, 12 months from now. But let's just assume this all plays out to fruition. Bank of Canada forecast 1.7% and the feds are selling you it's going negative 0.2%. Well, that that should really change a lot of forecasts, right? I mean... That seems kind of disinflationary for one, fewer people, fewer GDP growth. Remember, GDP growth is simply just population growth times productivity growth. And so what you're actually going to see is, is you know, forecast from RBC is that GDP will actually shrink. It will shrink. It will knock off one percentage growth to GDP. That is RBC's uh, modeling that is coming through. So again, we are going to see what you're going to say, well, hold on a minute. You've got, you know, what, 400, still got 395,000 permanent residents. What are you talking about negative population growth? No, we're actually, because we're going to see a negative outflow of non-permanent residents. They're actually going to go to decline. The government is basically saying, go home. You're not going to get a work visa when you're done your school. You're not going to get an extension on your work permit. You're going to go home. And so there's going to be net outflows of non-permanent residents. Uh, and that is the, the reason why. So the, the, the growth in permanent residents is basically going to be people that are already here, they're on, you know, student visas, things of that nature. They're, they've got, you know, the work permit. They will, some of them, not all of them, some of them will basically just shift 
they'll shift from the non-permanent resident bucket to the permanent resident bucket. And that's how you'll get your 395,000 permanent residents next year. But overall, the population is not going to grow over the next two years. Again, the ramifications are significant. What is happening today in the housing market? Okay, well, what's happening today, what we know for sure is that we have rents are currently declining. Rents in, in major metropolitan cities like Toronto and Vancouver are outright declining. This is now backed up by data from rentals.ca. Uh, what we know, what we know for sure is we know that there are a record number of no, condos under construction and there are a record number of purpose-built rental housing under construction. And so we've got a pipeline that is full of new housing that is going to be completing over the next 12, 24 months. And it's going to be completing at a time when today rents are falling and your population is no longer growing. So again, I have to go back and say, well, what has been one of the core theses? You go into any development presentation center or you know, everyone that's talking about how you got to invest in Canadian real estate and you can't lose money. And the first thing someone says to you is they say, well, you know, we're growing. We're just, we're growing so fast. You know, you got to buy, you got to buy. We're growing, you know, record population growth. Again, we're going to see a decline, a potential decline in population growth. So what is the core thesis today to buy Toronto pre-construction condos that are 20% above resale prices? What is the investment thesis? And I think they're going to have to really scramble here to find a new line to pitch these units to investors. And so, uh, I, again, I think the ramifications here are significant. Um, again, there's a lot of ifs, ands, or buts um, around the execution of this current level of government it has been proven time and time again that they are not very good at executing on policy measures. So that's number one. And number two is the upcoming election. I, I suspect that the conservatives, while they're not going to come out and lobby for significantly higher population or immigration growth, I suspect they're probably also not going to go with the z zero over the next two years, particularly uh, due to the fact of the implication that's going to have on GDP growth and uh, what I think is going to transpire in the housing market. Because again, uh, declining rents, well, yeah, it's great for affordability, um, that can create a lot of mess. That can create a lot of mess. And so you've got, again, uh, in terms of rental units that are under construction, um, right now, rental units under construction is a share of the total rental stock. You know, it's over 15% in BC. Uh, in Alberta, you're close to about 13%. Um, in an Ontario, you're about 6%. So 6% of all rental units that are currently that are available, we have that many units under construction right now. So uh, huge, huge, huge shift. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. But I think, uh, you know, again, we know the damage that's been done from 1.2 million people a year, completely idiotic, completely insane. I think we should have some immigration. I definitely don't think we should have zero, um, but I don't think we should have 1.2 either. And that's what I've always said is we need to discuss the number. What is the right and appropriate number? And I've had this discussion with many policymakers. I've sat in the room with Mark Miller. I've, you know, I've, I've chatted with these guys about it. And the, the, the number ain't 1.2. And I don't think it's zero either. But uh, this is the strategy. This is what happens when you get beat up in the polls. Uh, and, and, and if you look at what's happening in the polling, Canadians are becoming increasingly, increasingly where the majority of Canadians are now anti-immigration. They think the levels now are actually doing more harm than good. That's not me saying it. That's what the polls are saying. And so a drastic turn of events that I think is going to have significant impl implications um, on the housing market. You have to think about this. If you are, if you have capital, if you have capital today and you're a real estate developer and you're like, okay, should I today risk, should I take a $50 million, $100 million risk and go and build a condo tower today. The economy doesn't really look that great. Um, there's a lot of political uncertainty. 
Construction costs are still elevated. Permitting costs are still elevated. And by the way, there's going to be no immigration growth over the next two years. And by the way, you've got record number of units that are currently under construction and completing soon. I think I sit on my hands and I wait this one out to see how things play out. And so for, for projecting forward, I think a lot of the smart money is going to be sitting on the sidelines and uh, is probably just going to exacerbate the shortage that I think is coming over the next four or five years. Again, we've done this math. You've projected out. In 2028, you're going to have near zero, near zero housing completions in places like the GTA. Uh, because as you don't start new projects today, the pipeline looks pretty thin about five years out, but looks pretty looks pretty well supplied today and over the next 24 months. So we'll see how this all plays out. But uh, as always, guys, hope that helped. I will see you next week.